Well, scientists are keeping a close eye on a massive object flying straight toward our sun. The Manhattan-sized object is called 3I Atlas. And during observation, scientists have been seeing it change color and even grow a cometary tail. Their findings have led to some belief that this object may actually be made by another life form. So joining me now is Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb to talk about the latest development. Avi, I've been listening to every talk that you've been given over the last several months on this particular object. Tell us, you don't believe that this is an asteroid or a comet? No, I think it's quite unusual. It's not like the comets or asteroids that we have seen from the solar system. So it's just like finding a, an object from the street in your backyard and it doesn't look like a rock that you are familiar with, so we should all be curious. And in this case, it could have implications to humanity if it is technological in origin. So we can't just uh, dismiss the possibility that it's technological because the other possibility is more likely. We have to consider it seriously as a possible black swan event. And that means we have to take as much data as possible. So this object came in the plane of the planets, which is very unlikely. It's a chance of one in 500. And so perhaps it's on a reconnaissance mi mission. It just passed the sun on October 29th last week. And uh, after that, it uh, changed course. And uh, I calculated that it must have lost at least a tenth of its mass if it's a natural comet. However, uh, yesterday there were images of it that didn't show any cometary tail. Right. There is no I, evidence. And I wanted to ask you about that. What does that mean if it does not show a cometary tail? And is there a, 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 a universe in which that could, it could be a comet but still not show a tail? Yes, it's possible, but uh, uh, we should at least see the mass that it lost, which is a substantial fraction of its initial mass. And we haven't yet been able to verify if that's the case. Of course, uh, the alternative is that there is some engine that is propelling it. It's not, uh, you know, the evaporation, the cometary evaporation of uh, volatiles from the surface of the object. And as time goes on in the coming weeks, it's uh, coming out uh, away from the sun. Uh, when it was closest to the sun, we couldn't look at it because the Earth was on the opposite side. But mm. in the coming weeks leading to December 19th, that's when it will be closest to Earth, we should learn much more about it. Okay. And, um, and my hope is, you know, we will figure out whether it's natural or technological. And that's why science is exciting, because we don't need to assume that we know the answer in advance. We don't need to behave like the adults right. in the room. So uh, there was another report that said it shows no signs of non-gravitational acceleration. What does that mean and what does that tell you? That was true in the five months preceding October. Mm -hmm. So uh, there was no evidence for the trajectory deviating from what we expect based on the gravity of the sun. We can calculate how an object would move. So it didn't deviate from that based on 4,000 data points that were obtained by 227 observatories around the globe. However, in the second half of October, it started deviating as it approached the sun. And then the question is, what triggered that? If uh, you're dealing with a spacecraft, a uh, closest approach to the sun is the best time to maneuver and take advantage of the gravitational assist from the sun. So that's what we do with our own spacecraft. But it could also be just cometary evaporation. So we're still waiting for the verdict as to which of these possibilities is right based on upcoming data in the coming weeks. And you know, science is work in progress. And uh, despite what you hear from people who claim they know the answer, it really depends on what the evidence shows in the coming weeks. Uh, and, and you said, so in the coming weeks here, in December, that's when it's going to be closest to us. And do we have the technology able to kind of differentiate what this object is? Definitely. We will have the Webb Telescope, the Hubble Space Telescope. We have hundreds of observatories on Earth. And then it will pass close to Jupiter on March 16, 2026. So there are lots of opportunities gotcha. for us to observe it. There is also the highest resolution image that was not released yet by NASA that was taken on October 2nd when this object passed close to Mars. And I, I very much look forward to seeing that. Uh, so altogether, you know, it's a blind date of interstellar proportions. And it's exciting to look at the other side. My hope is that on December 19th, when it comes closest to Earth, uh, it will not deliver any unwanted gifts for the right. holidays.
<laughs> That's not, we don't want that. Uh, we, we have to wrap up, but I, I do want to mention that you are getting support here from Representative Anna Paulina Luna. She is helping get some images released so you can further your research. Avi, I mean, I wish we could talk to you some more. I could talk to you for a lot longer than this, but thank you so much uh, for joining us and just getting this word out there that, you know, you want to continue to study this more and get more scientists involved in the research into what this object is. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and anyone that wants more details should listen to the Rogan uh, podcast with yep. me a week ago. Oh, yeah, I listened to that, too. It was fantastic, the entire thing. Thank you so much, Avi. Appreciate it.